Deep in the Albanian countryside, a giant complex is under construction. It's the new headquarters of the Mujahideen e Kalk, the MEK, a large, well-organized Iranian opposition group dedicated to one thing, regime change in Tehran. And the MEK have powerful friends they hope will help them achieve that, including members of President Trump's inner circle. The Iranian regime is the leading state sponsor of terror. When he pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal, President Trump signaled the start of a new, more hostile Iran policy. Looking on approvingly, his national security adviser, John Bolton. Thank you, thank you very much. Before he assumed office, John Bolton was paid to give speeches at pro-MEK events. Here he is in Albania last year. Delighted that you're all here in Albania. The declared policy of the United States should be regime change in Iran. President Trump's aides say that the MEK's leader, Maryam Rajavi, is the face of a democratic future for Iran. You're the vision for the future. You are the vision for the future of Iran. But the MEK has another face, that of a political religious cult that brainwashes its members, enforces celibacy, and has imprisoned those accused of breaking its rules. The MEK says the complex is a refugee camp, so I went to take a look. Albanians aren't free to enter, and I'd heard that the 2,500 MEK members inside can only emerge if supervised by commanders. Hello, how are you? We were immediately intercepted by Albanian private security guards. So they're saying we can go no further. We're within a few hundred yards of the Mujahideen al kalk camp. But this is Albania. It's hard to understand why we can't go any closer. They're erecting more buildings, expanding the camp. But they didn't want to be filmed or to talk. Hi, how are you? Okay, good. Everything good? I spotted a woman in the classic MEK garb. You are Mujahideen? Yeah, Mujahideen. Okay, At this point, it. several MEK men okay, appeared from okay. inside the camp and accused us of being Iranian government spies and terrorists. You want to see my... Um, that's my card. That's my card. Press card. The guards attacked our translator and went for the cameraman. So what have they got to hide? OK, we see still. OK. Back in the 1980s, in the Iran-Iraq war, the MEK fought on the side of Saddam Hussein against their own country, so many Iranians saw them as traitors. The Iranian regime then executed thousands of MEK political prisoners. They operated from a military base in Iraq and were classified as terrorists by the US government. When the Americans Whoa. toppled Saddam in 2003, the MEK surrendered to US troops, but they came under repeated attack from pro-Iranian forces. During a massacre, the Americans revoked the MEK's terrorist status and shipped the group off to a poor country, which was grateful for US support and wanted to earn more, Albania. Hello. Uh in Tirana, I met a couple who were trying to convince Albanians Hello. that the Hi. MEK is up to no good in their country. Hello. Mustafa Hi. and Mabuve used to be Hello. MEK supporters. They've come all the way from Canada in the hope of seeing their daughter, Samaya, who they say was kidnapped by the MEK 20 years ago and is being held in the camp. I am not against the Mujahideen. It's not my business. I am not political. Just, I want to see my daughter. Ten minutes, please. We didn't get here, me and my wife. Just see. Mustafa has filmed his two decades long odyssey to rescue his daughter, joining other desperate families in Iraq. On the streets of Tirana, 
he was roughed up by MEK members, shouting that he was an Iranian terrorist and spy, even though he's been a Canadian citizen for 17 years. I try to translate in Albania to the MEK, who won't in let Samaya see her parents unsupervised, has issued a clip also, of her, also uh, accusing her father of being years, an Iranian he spy. Albania. He came back in Albania to say uh, some of these words to uh, all the people in Albania to say, um, Mujahideen have been uh, kidnapped me. But uh, this is not right because I am in free country in here. In the anonymous suburbs of the Albanian capital, we found some of the 120 or so Mujahideen defectors who've escaped the camp. They fear that their former commanders are still watching them, but some want to tell their story nonetheless. This hashtag belongs to Mujahideen. These are all yes. Mujahideen hashtags. As a trusted member, Hassan was a keyboard warrior. While others were barred from any contact with the outside world, he says his job was to post fake comments on Twitter, exaggerating Iranian people's support for Maryam Rajavi and insisting that the MEK is behind current protests in Iran. It should comment by the different account and not MEK members, Mujahideen, because we want to show the Iranian people support Maryam Rajavi. So you were a troll? Yes. You were an internet troll? Yes. Hassan showed me where he used to stay in the camp. We lived here. He says reading online made him realize that life in the MEK was not normal, especially the endless indoctrination, rigid separation of men and women, and the forced public confession of any thoughts about sex. During the day, all of the members should write the, any sexual moments in the Any mind. thought, you mean? Yes, yes. Right on the paper. And every night we should uh, read in front of the others and their commanders. For example, when I wake up, I have a sexual moment. Or when I saw a woman or a girl, I have a uh, yeah. sexual moment. Or so if... you have to confess? Yes. The defectors should feel free in Tirana, but mental and physical scars remain. Mohsen, as we're calling him, told us he was tortured in Iraq 24 years ago when Mujahideen commanders accused him of being an Iranian spy. I was it wasn't until he got to Albania that he plucked up the courage to defect. Man, خودم واقعا این که اصلا احساس امنیت نمیکنم توی این کشور آلبانی. به دلیلی که مجاهدین هستن. میخوام سربنیستش بکنم. اونا دنبال سربنیست کردن منن. We've obtained a secret Albanian police threat assessment from earlier this year that says the MEK members are deeply indoctrinated, have been part of military structures and participated in acts of war and terror. It continues, in Iraq, some former members of this organization were murdered. There are reasonable suspicions that the situation here is similar to the one in Iraq. Albanian security officials worry that the MEK is building a state within a state. Me regula le temi stricte dhe në rase del nga, nga korniza e tyre kriminale, ata ekzekutojen vet nga antarët e vet brenda vetes. When we contacted the MEK, they accused Channel 4 News of being Iranian government agents, saying no logical person with common sense would expect the Iranian resistance to partake in a program which all signs indicate has been coordinated with the Ministry of Intelligence and Security from the onset. The MEK held its annual jamboree in Paris in June. President Trump's personal lawyer was there as usual. Over the years, he's been paid tens of thousands of dollars to promote the MEK. The mullahs must go, the Ayatollah must go, and it must be replaced by a democratic government, which Madame Rajavi represents. 
other U.S. politicians were also present. Some are long-standing MEK supporters, but now, for the first time, they can effectively provide a hotline to the Oval Office. Perhaps the MEK's cultish behavior makes it more of a threat to itself than to Iran. In the camp, they're aging, and as they weren't allowed to have children, there's no new generation. On the outskirts of Tirana, we found a bleak graveyard. Identical tombstones for MEK members who died of disease or old age. Martyrs for a cause that has almost no support in Iran, but is nonetheless promoted by paid American politicians. Maybe they believed until the end. Or maybe they didn't dare escape, so they died without seeing their families again, far from home.